Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at how we provide uh, custom text in the list here. So if I just add a couple of the products, you can see it's displaying the product name. And because we've bound this list box to our data, um, we've specified that we want to display the description. And often we want to customise what's displayed in the list box, but because it's bound, this can sometimes be a little bit difficult. So what we're going to do is take a look at how we use the format event to actually capture what's been displayed here and then to modify it. I'm just going to start off by closing the form. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back in to the design view here and we're going to select our list box. We're going to go into the properties, find the events and scroll up until you find format. In the format I'm going to give this a name. So I'm just going to say here format uh, list item and this is going to create a new event handler so I'll just press return and we can see that we have this new event handler here called format list item you can see the two parameters there's the object which is the sender and this represents the actual control so for in this example it would be the list box but all events tell you which control has sent it and also we've got this thing called list control convert event args and this is what we're going to be using and we'll take a look at that in a moment. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how we actually get the items out. So what we're going to do here is first of all just put in a string and we're going to call this current description. And what we want this to do is actually look at the current description, the current thing that's being displayed. Now to get that out we use our E here which is a parameter we use dot and if we use list item that gets the current item now the current item is going to actually be uh, an instance of table product because that's what we bound it to so to convert this what we're going to do is do a cast so what we'll need to do here is cast it to the class that we've bound it to so we know it contains a list of products so I'm going to cast that item to a product and what this does, it allows us to get the various different items from this. So I'm just going to bracket that round just so it makes it clear to see that we've cast it first. And then if I put the dot, you can see I can access all of the properties of table product now. So all I'm going to do is get the description from that. So now I want to look for the current price. So what I'm going to do here, again, is just put string and we're going to have the current price and we're going to do exactly the same, so I'm just going to take this we need to do something a little bit different here um, but for the first instance we're just going to get the price out of there Okay. so at the moment the price as you can see is a decimal we require it to be a string so what I'm going to do around the outside of that I'm just going to make some space so you can see how this works is I'm going to use the string dot format and what I do, I specify what I want to format it, so here I'm just going to put in a couple of bits, I'll explain what they do in a second. Um, so you can see I've got a curly brace with a zero, that's the matching parameter, and C tells us I want it to be of a type currency. And then I put a comma, and you can see that this argument ties into this zero here, so if I've got one argument I put a zero, if I had more than one argument I could specify more in those curly braces. So I'm just going to finish that off by closing that bracket and putting my semicolon. So what I've got here is it's extracting the price and it's formatting it as currency and store it in the current price variable that we've got there. The next thing I want to do is I want to put some padding in. The reason I want to do this is I'd really like to be able to see uh, the description and then have some white space and then the price nicely aligned. So to do this I'm actually going to use uh, this, uh, an inbuilt method called pad and pad right. So what I'm going to do is here I'm going to say current description and pad it. And what this is going to do is literally put some extra white space. So what I want to do is literally say current description dot and pad right. And I specify the total width here. So I want them to be around about 30 I think should do uh, spaces for that. So we've now got a padded description. So literally all that's left to do now is to join everything together and put it back. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say e.value. And again, e is this control event. So what we're going to do is set what's displayed now in the list. 
and we're going to make that equal to my padded or my current description padded and I'm going to add that or append that rather to the current price okay so what should have happened here is that I've got the current description so I've taken the item that's currently being bound extracted the description extracted the price padded it and then hopefully get that to display so what we'll do we'll take a brief look at that So we'll open the till here, press the button, and we can see now that the product's being displayed, padded with the white space and the price at the end. Incidentally, if I show you what would happen if we didn't pad that, if I just close down, just to sort of show you what this padding actually does, um, if I just take that out there for a minute and just leave it as a current description, run that through. If I just open the point of sale here, you can see that both things are sort of pushed next to each other. The nice thing about using the pad is that what we get is if this description is slightly different in length the price will all line up in that column so that's quite useful to, uh, for us. The only thing I'm going to say about this is if you do want to have everything perfectly aligned you're going to have to within design view you're going to have to pick a font for the list that's correctly spaced so by that if I just go into the properties of that and we just go and have a look at the text uh, oops I'm still in events here so let's just go back to properties here so if we go and find the text of the font certain fonts don't have uniform spacing so what you're going to need to choose here I recommend going for something like courier um, let's just find that could save time by just putting it in but uh, there we go. So courier. It could have been easier just to type it in, really, wouldn't it? Okay, so there we go. Courier new, and that's a mono space font. So we're going to basically guarantee that everything on our list will nicely align, and we'll see what I mean by that later on in subsequent videos.